The Inspection of the Work by Moses At last the work has been completed and the day of its inspection has come. From every part of the camp men and women come, bringing the work which they had made. All now passes under Moses' eye, and as he notes that it has been done according to the pattern which God had showed him on the mount, he blesses the worker. What a day that was to those willing workers, who had toiled for weeks and months. Some of them doing a very lowly kind of work, the men fashioning boards and tanning skins, the women spinning goat's hair and weaving fine linen for the court wall. Few may have taken notice of their work, and it is possible that at times they would wish it had been their lot to do what Bezalel did, work on the lampstand or the beautiful cherubic figures on the mercy seat, as his praise would be in everyone's mouth. But now their time has come, for as Moses takes up their work and examines it, for the time it has the same prominence as the work of Bezalel or Ahizamach. And those dear women, who spun and wove in the retirement of their tents, apparently in a subordinate place, have the joy of hearing from the lips of Moses, Jehovah bless you, and it makes up for all their toil. How this suggests a day that is before the Lord's people, when they shall stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Then all their work will be passed on by the Lord. What will count then will not be quantity, but quality. It will not be well done, good and successful servant, but well done, good and faithful servant. If the Lord was so particular about going by the pattern in making the tabernacle, which was but a type, is it reasonable to suppose that he is indifferent as to whether or not his people go by his word in their work now? That little word in 2 Timothy 2 verse 5 will apply to that coming day, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. That is, according to the law governing the game. Many believers act as if they believed the Bible was only given to show them how to get to heaven. They never seem to think that it is a book giving instructions as to their service and worship, which God expects them to carry out. Afraid that too close adherence to it will interfere with their usefulness, they allow themselves great latitude, and the results seem to justify their course. But they have been building wood, hay, and stubble, not gold, silver and precious stones, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 12 to 15, and the fire will leave little of the big pile of wood, hay, and stubble. Surely it were only the part of wisdom, to go by the word now, even though it be the unpopular path. His well done good and faithful servant, will be far better than the praise of Christians now, when that is won by departing from the word. The Women's Work In the tabernacle we have a suggestion of the sister's place now. We do not think that she would bring her wheel or her loom out into the center of the camp, as she spun or wove. But if her work was of a quiet kind, she will not lose her reward, any more than the man who did the more ornate work. On the day of inspection, she saw her work exhibited before all, and heard the commendation of Moses upon it. Let the sisters carry on their God-appointed service, not murmuring because God has given the brother the more prominent place in the work. In that coming day they will be glad that they never sought to get out of their true sphere, which God in his wisdom has called them to fill. They may not lead in the prayer or praise of the assembly, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 34, she may not teach men, which addressing men and women in a promiscuous assembly, would be doing, 1 Timothy 2 verse 12. It is significant, that though a woman was the first to see the Lord after he arose, and got a message to the disciples, yet in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 5 to 8 not a woman is mentioned. Why? Because there we have public, official testimony to the Lord's resurrection. When Paul was staying in the house of Philip, who had four daughters which did prophesy, no doubt to women, and God had a message for Paul, he did not use one of them, but sent Agabus from Jerusalem, Acts 21 verses 8 to 11. Those dear sisters who may be unable to go to the mission field, or engage in Sunday school work, may yet spin goat's hair or weave fine linen in other ways. As for example, some sick sister may be cheered by a visit, and some of her housework cleared up, which she had been unable to do. Then there is that sister with small children, which she cannot take to the meeting, and so is kept at home. To go and keep them once in a while, and let her get under the refreshing ministry of the Word of God, is something which the Lord will appreciate, something like weaving the fine linen, which will bring his well done, in that day. The Tabernacle Finished and Occupied Exodus 40 verses 33 to 35. We think of those words which met us at the beginning. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Exodus 25 verse 8. Now it is ready, and how gladly God takes possession of it. 
Some years ago, in Australia, a brother who was a contractor and builder, got the job of building a church for a rather high church congregation, the rector coming very frequently to see how it was progressing. When it was just about completed, he surveyed it with pleasure, and remarked to the contractor, it is a nice house of God. Yes, replied the contractor, if you can get him into it. How eager God was to enter the tabernacle and fill it with his glory. As the people of Israel saw the glory enter and the cloud take up its abode on it, how they must have felt. One might say to another, just think of the honor we have had, to have been allowed a part in the making of this tabernacle, God's dwelling place. The day is not far off, when the spiritual house will be finished and filled with the glory of God, Ephesians 3 verse 21, 5 27. Rev 21 colon 9 dash 22 colon 6. And when we see the church glorified, we shall marvel at the grace which allowed us to have a part in a work so glorious. It was honor heaped on honor, to have been saved and then to share in this wonderful work.